Hey guys, it's Taylor C. Mitchell with an exciting review for you today. I'm going to be reviewing Jeff Lemire's Frog Catchers. Now this book will be released by Gallery 13 this coming Tuesday, September 24th. But I have been given an advanced copy of the book to review for you guys um, from Jeff Lemire himself. With that said, um, all these thoughts on this review are my own. So Jeff Lemire is my favorite writer going currently. The reason why is this book right here. So last year, my birthday, my wife gave me a gift certificate to go to the local comic book shop here, Comic Book University. And this is the book I decided to pick up. I picked this up because, and I never read a Jeff Lemire book before, but I just wanted something different. I was kind of disgruntled with the, the big two, Marvel and DC, with all the re reboots they've done over the last few years. And I've been out of comic books for a while. I just wanted something different that I can really dive into and, and tug at my heartstrings and that kind of thing. So I've, I've heard of Jeff Lemire, I've heard his name a lot, and I've been wanting to read Essex County, but they didn't have it at the time. So I picked up this book and um, Rough Deck, and I ended up reading it in one night, in one sitting, and it was just blew me away. And then the next day after that, I went to another bookshop, and I had to look for every Jeff Lemire book I could find, so I found Underwater Welder. And um, a copy of, of his Old Man Logan, too. And I, I love those, two. This is more of his creator-owned uh, graphic novel-style work. And then I also eventually went into his most well-known graphic novel, probably, and that was Essex County, which is also fantastic. Now, the great thing about th the three of these are that Jeff Lemire does all of the artwork, all the writing on them. Um, but he is a very prolific writer. He does a lot of work with Dark Horse, um, on his Black Hammer series with the Dean Ormston. Um, he's on, he's, he's got a great image series right now, Gideon and Falls, with uh, the artist Andre, Andre Sorrentino, excuse me, um, which has been fantastic as well. And then he's done work with DC and Marvel in the past, of uh, working on like Moon Knight and uh, Old Man Logan, like I said, for Marvel. And then for DC, he's written things, like he's currently writing a, a new ongoing the Inferior Five, and he also has a Joker series coming out later, and The Question. So he's all over the place. Jeff, he's a, such a prolific writer, like I said. He's just constantly, his output's incredible. There's going to be something, if you're into a certain genre of comic books, likely Jeff Lemire's written something in that genre that you can find and really uh, grab a hold of. So Frog Catchers is, like I said, it's another one of his uh, creator-owned graphic novels that he did all the artwork for and all the word you know wrote all the words it comes out this tuesday and it was fantastic and it reminded me so much actually of the underwater builder in which case in the introduction by damon lindelof he equates this to like a twilight zone episode and i think that's also the feel that you get when you read frog catchers is that it's got that kind of that twilight zone twist to it and when i say twist i don't i don't mean that in a I feel like sometimes when people hear like, oh, it's got a cool twist to it, they kind of think that means it's that they start off the story one way and they flipped it the other way and then it didn't. But when I mean twist, I just mean it like you go in expecting one thing and you're reading along and reading along and you're developing like a really um, entrenched feelings about these characters and then it ends in a way that you completely don't expect. Like you go into a, a book <laughs> reading about a little boy catching frogs and you end up leaving having all these feelings about your relationships with your family and your people and people around you, those kinds of things and what you find important in life. And, the, and that's just like the greatest writing to me is when, when a writer can take a topic like such a heavy topic like that, like your identity in the world and how you feel the people around you and pull those thoughts out of you from a comic book. I mean, it's just such a, a great testament of how well something is written. So the story begins with this mysterious boy reaching into this creek and catching some frogs. And then he starts to see these haunting images start to blend. And Jeff Lemire has an incredible job of like the artwork where like it's like you're looking into the creek and you're not seeing what you're actually seeing kind of thing. And then it blends beautifully into the story of this older man who's walking through this mysterious hotel doesn't quite know where he is but he finds this key and he runs into this boy 
the frog catcher, and he's just trying to figure out where he is and where where he can be. And the little boy tells him, "Don't use that key. Don't go into that room that you think you saw." It turns kind of quirky, where you uh, start to see some frog monsters kind of chasing him. But don't let that deter you, because then it turns beautifully into this story of this older guy and he's dealing with regret and loss and um, he starts to lean into the, the younger the younger boy and telling him about how he had a son and how he was an architect and he was so caught up in his work that he should have spent more time with his son and that kind of thing and it just I don't want to go too much further into it because I don't want to get into spoiler territory. But it's just a very gripping story. And like I said, it's right out of an episode of Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone with Rod Serling always did a wonderful job of having like these quick, quirky premises um, where they kind of teeter on being silly. But he used that as the platform to tell a wonderful, um, just heart-wrenching story that really made you think and really sat with you afterwards. So normally I like to talk about the uh, like the build of the books and whatnot. I don't have, I wasn't given a physical copy of the book, so I can't tell you. But I will say, even though I was giving a um, digital copy for free, I do certainly want to buy a physical copy of this book to have on my shelf. Because like I said, I want to have all that's left when we work. But also, this was a short read, only like 112 pages. I read it in like one sitting and within half an hour, really. But it's gonna be one of those books that like you have on your shelf and it's gonna be a great palate cleanser that you just wanna pull off and, and read every once in a while and reread again and again and every time you read it, you pull things from it. Um, so I don't know the build of the book. It does say that it's gonna be hardcover on Amazon um, if you purchase it from from there. And like I said, Galley 13 is producing it, or publishing it. They're the publishers that published uh, Roughneck. You can see the gallery 13 logo there and look at the measurements of the book it doesn't look like it's gonna be shorter than roughneck but it's kind of the same width across but and it's gonna be just about as, as tall as essex county if my uh measurements are correct so i think it's gonna be as tall as essex county and as wide as roughneck if that tells you anything so like i said if i get a physical copy of the book i'll come back on and, and show you that and show you the, constru the construct of it and and the how well it's put together and that kind of thing. I don't have any Gallery 13 hardcovers to see how well those are put together, but Roughneck's a really good quality book. Um, and one other thing that I loved about, that you saw in Roughneck, that you'll see in Frog Catchers, is the, the idea that Jeff Lemire will blend black and whites, or two tones even, if it's like blue and white, and then color images too, and it really kind of brings you into two different realities of the story. He does that really well in Frog Catchers too. It reminds me so much of, of like, the art of Roughneck with the mind-bending, twisting story of Underwater Wilder, which is another fantastic read. Um, this was published by Top Shelf, and I highly recommend this too. And I just want to see Jeff Lemire get a run on Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone has a long history in trench and comic books. I think it'd be great if uh, we saw Jeff Lemire do like a you know, four, six, 12 issue run of Twilight Zone with his style of uh, being able to twist storytelling and stuff like that. I think he's really, really good at that. Um, so anyways, I do want to thank um, Jeff Lemire and, and Gallery 13 for sending me an advanced copy, copy of the book. Like I said, all the words in this review were my own, not theirs. And um, thank you guys for listening. You can follow me on Twitter, at Mr. TC Mitchell. I've got an audio podcast podcast prevails where my friend and i review superhero and comic book movies you can certainly check that out i'll have links to all of that down below as well as coming across the screen here so you can see them as well like i said i'm taylor thank you for watching my review i'll catch you guys next time with the next next comic book review